solve the ODE dy dx is equal to x cubed plus 2 over x times y minus 1 over x times y squared. The first thing to notice is that this is a Riccati differential equation, and that is because it is of the form dy dx is equal to p of x plus q of x times y plus r of x times y squared. So how do we go about solving a Riccati differential equation? In this video, we're going to be using an analytical approach. This is going to allow us to, so to speak, reduce it down into a first-order linear differential equation with the appropriate substitution techniques. However, to do this, we need to know a particular solution, and that is more or less a guessing game. But generally speaking, especially for a textbook problem, it's going to be of the form y sub 1 is equal to a times x raised to the b power. Alternatively, it might look like y sub 1 is equal to a times e raised to the bx power. Regardless, in this case, the second option definitely is not going to help us, but the first option probably will. And in fact, I'm just going to tell you right now that a particular solution in this case is y sub 1 is equal to minus x squared. And we can verify that by just plugging that in. So first off, let's take the derivative for dy dx. So the derivative of minus x squared is minus 2x. And the question is, does this equal the right-hand side? We have x cubed plus 2 over x times y, which happens to be minus x squared. And then we have minus 1 over x times y squared. So we have a minus x squared, and that is squared. We'll continue to work with that right-hand side. So we have x cubed, then a minus 2x, then a minus 1 over x, minus x squared. Squared is just x raised to the fourth power. So now we have x cubed minus 2x, then a minus x cubed. Well, clearly we have this x cubed minus x cubed. That just drops out. And so we have, on the left-hand side, minus 2x. On the right-hand side, we have minus 2x, and so the solution does work. It's good. So we have y is equal to minus x squared, then plus some unknown u. We'll have to solve that. And we're going to do that with our substitution. But to do that, we also need to think about the derivative. So what is dy dx? Well, that would just be minus 2x, then plus our du dx. Now we have everything we need to make our substitutions. We have dy dx, which happens to be this. We have a y here, we have a y here, and that happens to be this. So let's substitute that stuff in. dy dx is just, on the left-hand side, minus 2x plus du dx. And then on the right-hand side, we have x cubed plus 2 over x times y, which is the quantity minus x squared plus u. Then we have a minus 1 over x, and that's times y squared. So this is minus x squared plus u, and that's squared. Let's work on that right-hand side. We have x cubed minus 2x plus 2u over x minus 1 over x. Let's square that. So we have x to the fourth power minus 2x to the second power, and then a u, then a plus u squared. Let's continue to simplify this, or work this out, so to speak. So x cubed minus 2x plus 2u over x minus x cubed plus 2xu minus u squared over x the left-hand side we have not touched, so that just remains minus 2x plus du over dx. And if we did things right, a few things should drop out, a few things should simplify. On the left-hand side, we have this minus 2x. The right-hand side, we have this minus 2x. So those go away. The equality still holds. Let's see. We have this positive x cubed and this negative x cubed. Those go away. And I think that's it. Okay, so we have du dx is equal to 2u over x plus 2xu 
minus u squared over x. Great. But if you look closely, very, very closely, this, in fact, is a Bernoulli differential equation. So here we have something of the form dy dx plus p of x times y is equal to q of x times y raised to the n power. It doesn't exactly look like that, but we can do some algebraic manipulations here. So first I'm going to do some factoring. So du dx is equal to, factor out the u for part of that equation. Um, so we have 2 over x plus 2x, and then our minus u squared over x. Just move things a little bit. du dx minus u, parentheses, 2 over x plus 2x, close parentheses, is equal to minus u squared over x. And this definitely now looks like a Bernoulli equation. And we know how to work with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is take that equation, du dx minus u, parentheses, 2 over x plus 2x, close parentheses, is equal to minus u squared over x. I'll take that thing and then multiply it by u to the minus 2 power. So now we have <clears throat> du dx u to the minus 2 minus u to the minus 1, parentheses, 2 over x plus 2x is equal to, I'll just say a minus x to the minus 1 power. And now we can do what I would usually say is a u substitution, but obviously the letter u has been used, so we will use w, and we'll stipulate that w is equal to u to the minus 1. Take the derivative, dw dx, is equal to minus u to the minus 2 power du dx. And from this, that implies that du dx is equal to minus u squared dw dx. So now we have our du dx. Substitute that in. We also have our u to the minus 1, which is just our w. So can get. For du dx, we have minus u squared dw dx. And then we have our u to the minus 2 power minus w times the quantity 2 over x plus 2x is equal to minus x to the minus 1 power. Simplify. We have a minus dw dx minus w parentheses 2 over x plus 2x, close parentheses, is equal to minus x to the minus 1 power. And we'll just multiply it all by a minus 1. So now we have a dw dx plus w, parentheses 2 over x plus 2x, close parentheses, is equal to x to the minus 1. Great. And now we've definitely reduced it down to a linear equation because this is linear. So we have a linear differential equation, dy dx plus p of x times y is equal to q of x. And we'll solve that, of course, with an integrating factor. So that's just mu is equal to e raised to the indefinite integral of p of x. So here, p of x happens to be this. So mu is equal to e raised to the indefinite integral 2 over x plus 2x dx. Let's work with that. So we have e. First, we'll deal with this part. So we have e raised to what? So that would be 2 times the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x. And then we have to think of this 2x. That's just a x squared. After all, if you take the derivative of x squared, you're back at 2x, as you know. All right, so we can simplify that. We can modify that. First thing is, because we're dealing with these exponents, so this 2, so to speak, can be moved over to this x, and we can square it. These are just regular exponential laws. So now we can get e 
raised to the natural logarithm of x squared. We know it's going to be positive. We'll drop the absolute values and plus our x squared. And we can, if you will, expand this out um, so we can get e raised to the natural logarithm of x squared multiplied by e raised to x squared. But here we have e raised to the natural logarithm of such and such. Those are inverses, so to speak, of each other. So now we have x squared times e raised to the x squared power. So that indeed is our mu, our integrating factor. So we'll take our equation, dw dx plus w, parentheses 2 over x plus 2x, close parentheses, is equal to x to the minus 1. We'll multiply everything by mu. So we have dw dx mu plus w, parentheses 2 over x plus 2x, close parentheses mu is equal to x to the minus 1 mu. We know with this technique, and we can of course verify if we wanted to, that the left-hand side is equivalent to the derivative of the product w mu. We can then anti-differentiate. So d dx, w mu, anti-differentiate. Left-hand side, of course, we have the fundamental theorem of calculus. That's just w mu. Well, mu, as we know, is x squared times e raised to the x squared power. What about the right-hand side? So we have, let's see, we have a 1 over x, and then we have it times mu. So that's times x squared times e raised to the x squared power dx. So let's work with that. It's not as bad as it looks, but let's make sure we make no mistakes here. So we have x squared times e raised to the x squared power. It's over x dx. We can simplify that out a little bit. So now, because we have this x squared divided by x raised to the first power, so now we have just an x e raised to the x squared power dx. And if we want to really make sure we make no mistakes, we'll just stipulate that z is equal to x squared. Think about the derivative dz is equal to 2x dx. So we have x e to the z dz. We want a 2x there, so let's times it by 2 and then times it by 1 half. We don't want to alter what we have. So an x, a dx, and a 2 is the same thing as a dz. So we have 1 half e raised to the z dz, that's just one half e to the z, which is now one half e to the x squared power. Great. And so we have the right-hand side. So left-hand side, we had w x squared times e raised to the x squared power. On the right-hand side, we have one half e times pardon me, raised to the x squared power, and then we'll add our arbitrary constant. So what can we do here? Well, we know that w, sorry, we know that w, my stylus sometimes goes out. All right, there we go. Our w is 1 over u. So let's just put that in there now. So we have 1 over u, and it's x squared e raised to the x squared power. Great. Um, there's different ways to approach this. Um, let's... Mm, 
we'll take it and then we will times it by e to the negative x squared power. OK, that makes sense. So we have 1 over u. Let me rewrite that. x squared over u is equal to 1 half plus c times e to the minus x squared power. We can get x squared. x squared is equal to u times the quantity 1 half plus c times e raised to the minus x squared power. And then we'll get u from that is equal to x squared over 1 half plus c times e to the minus x squared power. So now we have our, our u. We know y sub 1 is equal to minus x squared. And so our solution is therefore y is equal to minus x squared plus x squared over 1 half plus our arbitrary constant times e raised to the minus x squared power. And that is that.